Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 2,112. This week on Cars Yeah, we're celebrating the 35th anniversary of Hot August Nights, where the air vibrates with sound of muffled rumbles, of modified engines, rays of sunlight shine off polished chrome, and heavy scents of Dapper Dan, hair pomade fill the air. To learn more and plan your trip, go to hotaugustnights.net. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah! Today I'm in Reno, Nevada, with a very special guest by the name of James Herr. James, welcome to Cars Yeah! Do you have it in gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? You betcha, let's do it. You know, since we're talking about hot August nights today and summit racing, yeah, laying down stripes, that seems to be your world, I think. But before I give you a proper introduction, what's one little thing that maybe people don't know about you, James? My last few positions, uh, both with Hot Ice Nights and with Summit Racing Equipment, have been very much in the public sphere and kind of an extroverted, outgoing type of role. Uh, but really, I'm kind of a quiet, shy guy. I'm somewhat of an introvert. So I think most people would be surprised to find out that I'm a little more uh, introverted than than these positions that I've been in recently. So did that push you a bit out of your comfort zone, I would assume? And in doing that, did you learn a few things about yourself? Oh, absolutely. Um, it, it definitely pushed me out because uh, there, there are things you get into that you, don't, you wouldn't normally do. Uh, so if it's getting up in, in front of a big group of people and making a speech or or having a microphone shoved in your face for um, an impromptu interview, you absolutely you, you learn a trial by fire. You learn quickly. Uh, but I've enjoyed that part of it. I've enjoyed that. That's a good good thing, though, right? Absolutely. I always say that when we are put into the danger zone, if you will, since uh, Top Gear or Top Gun, <laughs> Top Gear, that's a TV show. <laughs> Top Gun just came out. The different thing. One's cars, one's jets. Right. Yeah, I, I think that is always good for everybody. But at the time, it's a little bit frightening or scary or uncomfortable. But typically, I've found once you do it, you go, oh, I, I did that. OK, that's cool. Yeah, another tool in the toolbox, right? Yeah, there you go. As we're talking about cool stuff. Well, let me give you a proper introduction here. James Herr is the project manager at Summit Racing Equipment, a company that he started working at back in 1998. Summit Racing was born in 1968 by a young engineer who wanted to fix up his 67 Corvette with performance products. And today they are the go-to part source for thousands of gearheads like you and me around the world. James comes from a long line of automotive enthusiasts from race car drivers to mechanics. He spent 14 years running the inbound and outbound operations at Summit, and in 2012, he managed their retail store, a position he held for 10 years. Today, he works in project management in their corporate offices and with vendors as well, and they've got a few of them. James has been involved with Hot August Nights on their board of directors as their president, which is pretty cool too. We'll be back in just a moment to talk more about Summit, Hot August Nights, cool cars, and all that stuff, but first a word from our sponsors. So, Give them a little love and we'll be right back. I love Covercraft's new five layer all climate cover. It was developed and engineered for anything Mother Nature can throw our way. It's very soft, breathable, and easy to store and pampers your paint and interior surfaces, providing maximum UV, rain, dust, and snow protection. Add their gust guard for windy conditions for extra protection. Their five-layer all-climate cover is custom-tailored with Covercraft's attention to detail, form and fit with a quality and attention that's been their standard since 1965. Covercraft protects cars, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, trailers, and watercraft. Craft too. Every one of my vehicles is protected by a Covercraft cover. And I have a deal for you. Use the code YA21 at Covercraft.com and you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order plus free shipping. That's right, 10% off and free shipping. Just type in the word YA, Y E A H, 2 1 at checkout, YA21 at Covercraft.com. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. Most people don't think about their collector car insurance until their annual premium becomes due. Well, why wait and see if there are better options for your beloved rides? 
Did you know if you change carriers before your policy runs out, your insurance company has to refund you the unearned portion of your policy premium? I did my homework, I shopped around, and I found American Collectors Insurance. And that's who protects my Porsche Turbo. That's right, the one I call my Orange Crush. They've been protecting collector vehicles since 1976. I encourage you to call my friends at American Collectors Insurance. Ask them about their agreed value policy. And if your collector vehicle is on your regular auto policy, you will be shocked at the savings, not to mention the assurance, should something bad happen to your ride, that you'll get what your vehicle is actually worth. Give them a call today for a quote at 866-ACI-YEAH. That's 866 866- 224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of Mark Green at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. That's American Collectors Insurance. Give them a call today. So James, we're back. So let's talk first about Summit Racing because this is an entity that I've known about forever it's the go-to place if you want to do things to your vehicle modify them make them go faster make them good look better all that i mean summit racing is just one of those names it seems like it's always been around so kind of walk us through your career there because you've done a lot of different things there and tell us a little bit more about what summit racing is all about you bet so summit racing equipment moved into the reno sparks area in 1998 and uh, I got the opportunity to join them almost from the moment they came into town. Um, I started with them in the receiving department, uh, ran the receiving and returns department for a few years, uh, moved over, ran the outbound picking and packing shipping department for a few years, ran both of them for a few years. And then, as you mentioned, uh, what was it, 2012, had the opportunity to manage the retail store. Did that for about 10 years, had some opportunity to work with the community, work with um, our customers directly. And then I just recently uh, had an opportunity to move to a position at, with our corporate offices, working directly with our vendors on some different programs. So it's been a fantastic career. And as you point out, um, Summit Racing is, it, first of all, just a fantastic company to work for but just a fantastic company for the automotive industry. Just what we've been doing with our, with our customers, with the car culture, it's been just fantastic. They, they just have a great internal culture within Summit Racing Equipment. It's been a real pleasure working with them over the years. Now, I mentioned that you came from a family that enjoyed cars. Tell us a little bit about that background. You bet. So my grandfather was into modifying vehicles probably from the time he could pick up a wrench. <laughs> and he he started, he was a part of the first car club in the Reno area. Really? Actually looking at one of his plaques that I was able to get from him. Yeah, so he had, I have a, a patch from his jacket from that first car club. And who knows when that was from? That was probably from the early 50s, late 40s. He was always into modifying vehicles, always into hot rods, got into uh, racing. He and his buddy were just weekend warriors with the race cars. I have mechanics in the family. My my father-in-law was a lifelong mechanic. And my son just started his career as a mechanic just a few months ago, actually. So yeah, it's been through and through in our in our family. Sounds like petrol runs through the veins. <laughs> <laughs> some, some lightweight motor oil there. Well, that, that's exciting. You know, there's nothing better than finding, figuring out your passion, number one, which for some people it's hard for them to do. But then to tie that into a career, uh, you struck gold, my friend. Without a doubt. Just being able to take all of that passion from my, within my family and uh, get a, a job with a company that it, it's such a good company. It's so involved with the car community and the car culture in so many dis- different aspects from, you know, off-road to race to daily drivers. I mean, Summit Racing is, is doing it all and they're doing it really well. When I think about Summit Racing, I just think parts, 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 and parts. Since you work with vendors now, how many SKUs do you guys have? Oh, millions. I, I couldn't tell you how many. <laughs> uh, we, we've got 
I don't remember it. I was talking to somebody the other day. It's 1,500 or 1,600 different vendors um, who are carrying basically all the products from all those vendors. So it's it's been it's been fantastic. I love it. Has the challenges with supply chain with COVID had a big effect on you guys? Because it seems like so many people I've spoken with, and I speak to a lot of people that sell products for cars and cars and all sorts of things related to automotive. That you know, it's it's really been a, a challenge. Yeah, so the, the department I work for now is merchandising and supply chain. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Yeah, you're like, why did you throw me into the alligator yeah. pit during these last two years? Yeah, let me pick, let me pick a, like the most challenging department to work for. But, you know, I, lo- I love the challenge. But, yeah, it's uh, uh, we are not immune to supply chain issues and pricing issues. We see it. I think that our relationships with the vendors – uh, help us get through situations like this because we have such great relationships with all of our vendors. So it, it helps a bunch. Boy, it just seems to be a, a ongoing challenge for absolutely everybody. Who would have ever thought this would affect so many people, virtually everybody. I don't know anybody who's not been touched by this, either from a health standpoint or a business standpoint, or even you know people that are retired trying to just buy something and they can't get something done or something on their home done or whatever it might be. I've waited. I finally got them installed, had to replace skylights in my home. Last December called about them and they just replaced them last week. Yeah, I don't think anybody's getting away from this stuff. It's, yeah, not it's for a while. Effort. Seems like it. Well, let's talk about something fun, and that's Hot August Nights. You're involved with this organization, not even so much as Summit Racing being a sponsor, but you're the president of their board of directors. So how did that all come about? Well, a few years ago, when I started in the retail store in Summit Racing, uh, one of the things I immediately got involved with was working directly with Hot August Nights as a sponsor, as a partner, really, uh, in the community. One of the things that I wanted to accomplish as retail store manager was community outreach, uh, getting involved with the community, the car community in any way I could. And so part of that was to connect with Hot August Nights and see what what more Summit Racing could do uh, with Hot August Nights. A few years later, I was invited to join their board of directors. And a few years after that, um, I was elected the president of the board of directors. So it's it's been a lot of fun, very rewarding role to play um, with that organization. It's such an awesome organization. So th- when you think about the board of directors for this event, what are some of the things that you guys have to deal with? Because this is a huge event. It's been going on, it seems like, forever. But when you think about bringing – you know, I had the, the head of, of Hot Dogs Nights on the show on Monday – Oh my gosh, I had no idea the kind of numbers of people and vehicles that show up for this event. So that leads me to the question, what are all, not all, we can't be here all day, but some of the major (laughs) things that you have to deal with in your position there on the board. Yeah, Hot August Nights is by far the largest special event in our area. And as you heard, it brings in just a ton of people, um, participants, spectators, etc., but the real purpose of the board of directors is to provide oversight, guidance, develop vision for the not just the event, but the organization and strengthen that brand, that Hot August Nights brand. So that that's really our goal. Our focus is is that oversight, guidance, vision, et cetera. Are there some things that are happening at this year's event that are a bit different than perhaps last year or past year's events that have been a result of the board? thinking of ideas or coming up with, uh, uh, as you say, a vision? Yeah, so we, we're really focused on working to attract younger demographic, younger folks into this this passion that we see with, uh, with our participants and our spectators. So when we look at what can we do as an organization or what can we do as uh, just this the event itself, uh, we try to focus on those areas that will bring in all demographics. So uh, when, that may be switching up and looking at mobile apps or um, the drag races is something we've done. Uh, it's it's not brand new, but we we added drag races to the event, um, and that brought in a whole different demographic of folks. But we're we're definitely trying to keep it fresh and keep it relevant to to all of our. Uh, but again, not just the participants themselves, but the spectators, because uh, we bring in so many spectators to the event uh, that we try to keep it interesting. 
I think it's so important. This is a repeated message I'm hearing from so many people. I I support so many Concord events around the world, really, and also clubs. And so many clubs are experiencing the situation where, well, let's say I'm a more mature guy. I've been around for a while. And you have groups of, of people that are like, well, this is the way we've always done it. Why do you want to change it? Why, well, you know, the kids aren't interested in this. And the women, they're not interested in this. And the people that have some vision are going, well, yes, they are, but you've never been including them. You've never given them a reason to come on board. And if you don't, in the next 10, 15 years, this club won't exist. Because nobody right. would be and around I, <laughs> having any interest yeah, in it. Yeah, it's what's interesting for me is my my son's twenty three, just got into his new career with uh, as a mechanic, mm-hmm. and he has a passion for vehicles and for I, all things automotive. So the demographics there, it's it's trying right. to find a way to connect with them. But at the same time, we have a very successful event. And we want to make sure that we take care of our current demographic. Our of current. course. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a balancing act. But I, I see people doing it and it's working and they're finding ways to do it. And it doesn't mean you're pushing out the old school. Uh, it just means that you're making things more interesting. And I think once they see that and they experience it, they realize, wow, there's, there's some great input we can get from young folks. And we can share our passion with them and include them. So I'm really happy to hear you doing that. I like to ask my guests about what I call driving inspirations, people that have been inspirational mentors or influential in your career, in your life. Is there somebody like that for you? Uh, This may sound cheesy, but without a doubt, there is no doubt in my mind that the most inspirational, supportive person in my life is my wife. Without a doubt. We've been married for 27 years. I could not have accomplished any of the things that I've accomplished in personal life and career without her. So there's no doubt in my mind that she's the one. Yeah. Great partnership you got there. I'm in, I'm fortunate. like you, James, same boat. I've been married 38 years and uh, awesome. yeah, awesome. there's uh, a lot of things my, my wife has put up with, but mm-hmm. for the most part, she's supportive and she's not quite a car gal and she knows I'm a car guy and she's always supportive of that habit and that hobby and the, my passion for that. So she's always there to root me on. So yeah, that's a key thing in any kind of relationship. We'll take a short break. We come back. I want to talk a little bit about obstacles, challenges, maybe even a failure. So keep the seatbelts tight. Hot August nights, Summit Racing. We'll be right back. You listeners know I've been into car care my entire life. I am so excited to team up with AutoGeek in 2022. AutoGeek.net has been a leading source of auto detailing products, accessories, and expert knowledge for more than 20 years. What started in 1997 as a mail order catalog company has grown into a multi-website based e-commerce store that they are today. With a large online presence on its own website featuring close to 100 different brands, AutoGeek has grown to be the largest car care retailer in the country. AutoGeek's wholesale program serves accounts in over 30 countries and its retail sector ships worldwide. Go to AutoGeek.net for the best product selection on the internet today and their stellar technical support. AutoGeek.net. It's where I go for all my detailing needs. That's AutoGeek.net. Linkage. It's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual informed, reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions. Ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey. And be sure to use the code cars yeah when you subscribe and they'll give you $10 off. Boom! Linkage, geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at LinkageMag.com. Here at Cars Yeah, it's all about inspiration. And our charity of choice is TechForce Foundation, where it's all about making a positive difference in young people's lives. TechForce helps young adults discover their talents and passions for all things automotive, with a mission of helping students develop a career as a professional technician. TechForce awards nearly $2 million in scholarships every year for students to pursue technical education 
and they support hands-on activities, events, and mentorships across the country, working to change the outdated perceptions of these careers. Auto techs are in high demand, but the supply of qualified technicians is critically short. They need your help to fuel their mission. Learn more and join me in supporting them at techforce.org. So James, let's talk about this. I always call it the big challenge question here on Cars. Yeah, and it's really more about what that situation taught you. So walk us through a challenge, a failure, some kind of thing you had to overcome. But more importantly, what was the lesson learned? You know, you mentioned it earlier. We were talking about getting into things that push you out of your comfort zone. Mm. And um, when I, I, I enjoy learning new things and being challenged with something that I have no idea anything about it. Two things recently in, in both of these professional hats that I've been wearing um, on the summit racing side, when I had the opportunity to manage the retail store, I didn't have a lot of experience in retail. I was not a retail guy. I was always an operations guy. Mm -hmm. um, so it was the challenge was getting in there, learning it, getting good at it and producing the results that needed to be produced in that position. And then on the hot August night side with that, wearing that hat, I had never sat on the board of directors a few years ago, whenever that was to be invited on the board of directors, get in there, figure it out. How does it work? And then a few years after that, to be elected the president of the board of directors, there's another challenge. There's another um, role to learn, uh, new lessons to be taught, and I thoroughly enjoy it. But those challenges uh, can be difficult. But when you get into those positions, the only option is to succeed. You, you, failure is not an option. So you figure it out, and that's I, I thought was always the best for me. It was just just push beyond my comfort zone. So it sounds like to me, the lesson here, the golden nugget in your story is raise your hand, volunteer, tell somebody, I'd like to try that. I'd like to do that. And then once you're in that situation, seek help guidance, of course, from people that know what they're doing. Listen to people, maybe even subordinates who have been there a while, but you find yourself in the position, but seek their help and then let them help you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, accomplish any of these things on your own you need support from from the folks that have done it before from the folks that are are doing it you mentioned subordinates you mentioned other mentors in the sphere but you you've got to build that team and rely on that team for that success yeah for sure well being a car guy i'm guessing you have a special vehicle story in your mm -hmm. life some kind of car vehicle that stands out take us for a little ride in that thing yeah, so there's been so many over the years, but currently it is a 1963 Chevy truck. Yeah. Long bed, step side, probably the most common way people would describe it was it's a barn find. <laughs> but I would describe it as a farm find because <laughs> this it. this truck had not been registered since 1974. We just bought it a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And we drove it home. It had lived its almost its entire life on a on farm. farm. Yeah, it was fully functional driving. But the real reason it's so special is it's my son's truck. It's uh, my oldest son is the mechanic. And my youngest son owns this '63 Chevy truck. It's just the experience of of doing it with him is has been the joy with that vehicle. <laughs> That's very cool. I love it. A farm truck versus a barn find, a farm. Yeah. Find, yeah. So. <laughs> Almost flows off the tongue better. I love it. <laughs> so I'm going to be your car psychologist today and get into your skull a little bit. If you were reincarnated as a vehicle, what would James Herbie, but more importantly, why? Yeah, I'm a truck guy. A truck guy. <laughs> 63 Chevy step side. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a truck guy. And I, I think the reason I would be a truck is because uh, the utility, uh, the hard work, I love getting my, my hands dirty, getting in there and doing the work that needs to be done. So I, I just think that it would have to be a truck of some sort. That's a great answer. I hear that from a lot of people. And it makes sense. Think of the truck, especially in America, as just 
red, white, and blue. I mean, it's everywhere. And oh, I'm yeah. always shocked how many trucks are on the road. Um, <laughs> just, you know, and people that drive him is every day. My next door neighbor drives a Raptor. He's always driven Ford trucks. That's just what he likes. He could drive anything he wants. And he's tried going down the sports car route, which is what I love, but he likes his trucks. So that's what he drives. I would assume Summit Racing being the kind of company it is and as big as it is, has found some ways to give back to the automotive sector. Are there some ways that that you guys do that? Yeah, the company is always looking to uh, connect with not just the car community, but we are, we're in four different cities in the United States. We have four different facilities, um, and we try to connect with each of those communities beyond just the car community and do the best we can to be a good community partner. But in the car community, Summit Racing is very dedicated to the customer, um, always trying to do right by the customer from their from their return policy to getting the right part the first time. So it's it's very much just in their core. How about Hot August Nights? As many ways they try to give back to the community. Yeah, the event itself provides such a great venue for participants and spectators to come together, share the passion, and just enjoy everything to do with classic cars and rock and roll. Got it's a year round organization. They're doing car shows throughout the year. Uh, they just started a new outreach to connect with all car shows and all car clubs in the area. So they're 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 constantly looking to connect with car participants, car enthusiasts, and just share that passion with them. Is there if you if you could pick out one particular aspect of hot August nights that you like the best? Because there's so many things going on in so many areas. I mean, it's so complex. I always uh, make it akin to a diamond with all these different facets sparkling all over the place. But if you could pick one thing that you're really fond of that happens during hot August nights, what would it be? Well, it's probably not answering your question, but it's the, <laughs> the entire it's the entire scope of the event, just how big it is. And, and to your point of the diamond with the multi, multi-facets, it just has so much to offer so many different people. So I know that doesn't answer your question you for <laughs> one thing, um, but I, I love all of it. I'm a horsepower guy when it comes, obviously, with the Summit Racing hat. Yeah. Um, I love the drag races, um, but I also love the, the auction. I love seeing those those cars go across the auction oh, yeah. block. Um, I love the different show and shines that are around town. Um, you've got million dollar cars in town uh, going up against each other. Uh, but so it's for me, it's really the scope, the grand scope of it all. Yeah, it's it's amazing. It's I could see it's kind of like Car Week and Pebble Beach. What's your favorite thing? It's like well, they're all just so wonderful, yeah. and they're all so different. I, how do I pick my favorite? I guess it's the one I'm at right now. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> you know, whatever that day is. So. How about a great book? I love to ask about books that people have read, either, you know, it could be business, could be fun, whatever it might be, but is there a book you'd like to share? Yeah, so the the two Jordan Peterson books of 12 Rules for Life and Beyond Order, um, I've, I've enjoyed both of those books. Yeah, he's great. You know, the 12 Rules for Life, my son gave that to me a couple of years ago for Christmas, and the first chapter, I'm like, What's with the lobster talk? I, what is this guy? What, this is a weird book. <laughs> oh, I man. My, I, I went out and bought the T-shirt. I mean, I, I'm, I'm that much of a fan. <laughs> he swallowed the lobster. There you go. I love it. So I'm going to enable you to go on what I call the ultimate drive. I'm going to buy you any car in the world. You can take it anywhere in the world, and you can take anybody you'd like in the world or somebody that's maybe past that you'd like to bring back and enjoy a drive with. What would that drive look like for you? Remember, I'm footing the bill, so don't be shy. <laughs> Well, I, I'll tell you a quick story. I um, I took my grandfather's 1940 Ford Coupe to a car show with my grandfather, nice. and that was one of the greatest memories I have. But to specifically answer your question, <laughs> and again, not to be too sappy, but I definitely would be going with my wife. Um, uh-huh. I, I, I just enjoy spending time with her and yeah. enjoy each other's company so much. So would you be in that 1940 Ford with your wife then? I don't have to buy you anything. <laughs> I know. Wait, here, here's another little boring answer. Uh, no, it'd probably be like a motorhome. I'd like a just motor- get on the boat <laughs> and just go and who knows how long and who knows how far. But I yeah. just love to get out. I, I love being out. I love being out there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, this country has so many beautiful things to go see. And one of the 
I think results from COVID has been that the sales of motorhomes, trailers, campers, RVs has just exploded because people, you know, they couldn't travel abroad. All of a sudden said, well, there's a lot to see in this country. Let's get out on the road. And if you're in your own motorhome, you're safe, you know, from the COVID challenges that we had and still have in some cases. Uh, So, you know, you get out there and drive, you're safe in your car, you can pull up to a place and camp and have a great time. So there's so much to see in this country. A lot I haven't seen. You start looking at places and you go, I got to get on the road. This is, you know, I can't waste any more time here. (laughs) This is crazy. So that's right. all, All right. Well, you made it easy for me today. Before I let you go, could you share maybe some parting words of wisdom or inspiration for our listeners? Sure. I um, I, I don't know. It might have been Jordan Peterson said this, but I, I had gotten some advice years ago that has been very beneficial for me. And that is when you go into a conversation with someone, you need to assume that that person knows something that you don't. And the goal of the conversation is to discover that and learn from this person. And when I do that, the conversations are much more positive and much more beneficial to everybody. I think that goes back to the idea of not listening to answer a question, but listening to learn. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's listening. Well, it's, it's, it's being able to listen rather than trying to prepare to talk. Yes. <laughs> there you go. You got it. Well, something I get to do every day because I never know what's going to happen in these conversations. It's like Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. I never know <laughs> what I'm going to get, but it always tastes pretty good. And you've made it a great conversation today. I really want to thank you for spending time with me. Before I let you go, how can people learn more about Summit Racing Equipment and Hot August Nights? So Summit Racing Equipment has four stores across the United States. Uh, where are we at? In Talmadge, Ohio, uh, McDonough, Georgia, Arlington, Texas, Sparks, Nevada. Uh, you can go to summitracing.com to find out more information. And then for Hot August Nights, everything uh, we have is on the web at hotaugustnights.net. There you go. A reminder, this is the 35th anniversary of Hot August Nights. And uh, just go to their website, hotaugustnights.net. You can learn a lot more. If you can make your way to uh, the Nevada area there, Reno Sparks, this is one of those week-long events that you Mm -hmm. don't want to miss. There's just so much to do. It's it's mind-boggling. If you missed my talk on Monday uh, with the head of Hot August Nights, the director, you should go back and listen to that because he had a lot to share as well. James, thanks for being so generous today with your time and your expertise. It's been great talking with you. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you at Hot August Nights. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!